have um, you know the, that mantle transferred to you from there? Well, Kampo uh, is not a it's not a shifting seat tied to that. Uh, when the person who occupied the position died, you can just install anybody anyhow. Uh, this is a shift tenancy title that has been existing for almost 500 years. Uh, the first area of the account for was Okuru Igongo, 1530. Uh, it was installed by Allah in Ajagbu. And uh, the inter grounds of the area of the account for has been 10, 15, 20 years. A good example, Are Ese Lakitola, 1964, he died in 1966. Uh, Are M.K. Wabiola now occupied the seat in 1988. Are M.K. Wabiola died in 1998. I occupied the seat in uh, 2018, 20 years after. And even Lato Shaddai, Are Lato Shaddai in 1886. He died in 1886. Akitola became Are in 1964, and you can see the gap. So, he's a traditional defense minister of Yoruba land, and which Yoruba did not always toy with. He is a shifting title that saddled a lot of responsibility, and that was one of the reasons they say, Are we own Difa? Difa Are Basori, Tite Obasori, Kini Owi. Yeah, interesting. Um, let's let's still talk about you. Um, you know, fitting into that um, position, very huge one. You started activism quite early enough. Can you just tell us about it? Uh, well, I started activism activism at the age of 23, 23 years. When the election of uh, M K Obiola was annulled uh, in nineteen ninety three. I, I decided to join the crusade of uh, giving us the resort back, giving, us, giving Chief MKO Abiola the mandate that was being given by the people in the institution when people exercise their franchise uh, to elect their own choice of leader as a president of Nigeria. So I joined the struggle in 1993 and uh, since then we have been moving based on how issue arise in Nigeria. We started. I started by campaign for democracy in 1993, and uh, in 1994 we founded another group called Odua Youth Movement, and uh, there was a man called Tony Grube. Tony Grube was an Igbo man, and he's the one that advised us that uh, he called Dr. Freddy Fashion that. Uh, uh, you people are in campaign for democracy. Dr. Fred Fashion was a patron of the uh, Odua Youth Movement by then. <coughs> so he said that uh, you people f should form an organization that will incorporate the elders, females, and youth. And that was the time we decided to form Odua People's Congress in August 29. 1994. In the office of one of our senators now, uh, in the chamber of the, one of our senators, Okoyemi Bamidele, that was the place we decide that uh, that was the place that uh, we had a meeting and decide on the name of Odua People's Congress. There was two names on the ground, Odua National Congress and Odua People's Congress. Seven of us voted for Odua People's Congress, two people voted for Nation Odua National Congress. That was how we ar arrived on the Uruguay People's Congress. Now, if we are uh, going to, looking back, from the time you started this job, and now, would you say you, you have any regrets for me being part of the formation of the OPC? Well, I, I, will, I will tell you categorically, I don't have any regrets. I believe everything that happened in my life is part of my destiny. And uh, it's part of the assignment God has given to you from heaven. And uh, at the same time, that was a reward on what we are doing. So definitely you can't regret. Uh, day by day, 
we saw how God elevates me in my own level. And uh, we see the result of our struggle from 1993 to 1999. At least we achieved democracy. Even the person we fought for did not become a president. But now he has been immortalized. Uh, Postumon's award has been given to him by President Muhammad Buhari, even though we don't expect he can do that. And he, and he, he recognized June 12 as a public holiday. So I believe uh, that uh, my background, my struggle was not in vain. And at the same time, our struggle now gives confidence to Yoruba that Yoruba is not a lazy race. When we were, when we were, when we were in school, I remember some of our friends who are Igbo and Niger Delta, they always told us that we fought civil war in 1967 to 1970, that Yoruba are Amala people, you, you, you always be a coward. But the, the coming of the struggle of uh, uh, June 12, 1993 to 1999, even till now, changed the narrative, changed the perception from the people, from some of our tribe that, uh, that we come together to to be in Nigeria as a nation, even beyond uh, Nigeria as a country. So, and at the same time, even though we did not even support the uh, President Obasanjo in 1999, Yoruba man became a president at the end of the day for a period of two terms. And uh, even, I believe that uh, this is not the democracy we fought for. It's still a civil rule because I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm a person that traveled to many countries. And I see how they run their democracy in, in those countries. But uh, notwithstanding, we'll be able to fight for the struggle, chase the military out of power, although we don't have the power to chase military out of power. It's the God that, it's the God that fought for us. But with our effort, military disengaged from uh, governance, going to barrack and hand over to civilians. So, and at the end of the day, I was given many awards, both local and international awards. And I was accorded about 52 shifting seat titles before I became a Kakanfo in 2018. So I don't have any cause to regret, although it was ups and down. It was a, it was a whole sacrifice. Uh, in calculation of the months I went for detention, it's about 18, 18 months, about one, one and a half years. And a different, I was detained in different police formation. And I was detained in different prisons, including Kuje in Niger State. I was detained, I was uh, detained, uh, remanded, not even detained. A police cell is detained. Uh, a prison is remanded. I was remanded in a Krikri Mazma prison. I was remanded in a, a prison in Abekuta. I was remanded in a Kuje prison. And I was remanded in uh, 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 Sulija prison. So I faced a lot of things. I went through a lot of things. My family went through a lot of things. But notwithstanding, I was, uh, it did not even cow me because all this uh, scenario did not cow me because I was determined. Uh, the mistake the oppressor always make is that uh, when, you are, when you are trying to victimize the person that stands by justice, but in, in another angle, you are beating that person. You are beating his mindset, you are beating his determination, and uh, you are beating his courage in the process. So I will tell you categorically, I did not regret. Now, aside from the time you went to, to prison, you were remanded, what would you describe as a time in your life, during the struggle, that where your time that you, you, you shed tears, maybe you had time to, to reflect and you said, ah, this is one of the greatest challenges I faced during the struggle? Well, I. The greatest challenge, the greatest challenge is some of our people that betray us in the struggle. When you are building an organization, the oppressors will bought them over. The oppressors will entice them and use them against you. And uh, there is limit you blame, you blame those, uh, some ethnic nationalities outside Yoruba land. Most of the problem we have in our struggle, 80 to 85 percent was being caused by the Yoruba people because, uh, because of a lack of unity within Yorubas. And uh, the issue of by within the Yorubas, 
and uh, the the issue of uh, being jealous of what you are doing and the issue of uh, having the mindset that uh, if you don't destroy what is doing it will take over yoruba from us yoruba land from us so that reason reasoning is very rampant in in the mind of our position even the worst part of it some of your fellow self-determination activists and even some of the ngo who did not even have the capacity to sacrifice the way you sacrifice will be jealous they will use them against you so uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of a uh, scenario that happened within the struggle that when you are building a structure they now use the person that is closer to you to set you back but uh, in the process at the end of the day you always turn to glory to us it may be a very serious crisis in the beginning but at the end of the day he always turned to glory those people they use they always sink them in terms of fame in terms of popularity in terms of every good thing that happened within life because you don't betray and have glory at the end of the day betrayer always be in the black book of almighty god so uh, some some issue like that you have a regret of building that person that you that i, I built god used me to made you i give you recognition and they use us they use you against us so definitely you always have a, you always have a, you always create a situation that you have a bitter mind in the struggle but sometimes you know some of your courage that is part of the uh, system and it's part of history it's part of a phenomenon in life we read the history of uh, judas we read the against uh, Jesus. We have read the history in the Quran how they betray and not be Muhammad, and uh, even our own uh, race here, we know what uh, Shuwa Bimot did to uh, uh, Obafemi Awolowo. We know what uh, Onobariro, Professor Onobamiro, who testified against uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo in 1963, uh, 1961 to 1962, and we know some people that betray Obafemi Awolowo, even in the in, in 90s. In the beginning of our struggle, we know how many people that betray us in the struggle. About 46 people formed NIDECO, National Democratic Coalition. Within a period of three months, <laughs> about 30 people moved away from the organization, from the coalition. So we know those people who left, who remain in the struggle. Some were in uh, SI, some are with, with us in the struggle. And even in the civil society, we know some comrades that turn to court, that will join us in the meeting and divulge all our information to the state. So we know where they are today. And uh, even some of them who make money, we know how history affects them at the end of the day. Yeah, I see that um, you are really grounded in history and you like to say a lot of it, which is very good. We well, have something for you still talking about history, but before we take that question, we'll take a short break and um, when we return, we are going to continue, you know, on this stride of history. Yes, welcome back. The program is Controversy. My name is Victor Ogunika and I have with me that we are caring for and then we'll be going through memory lanes with the on the on the of your land, Ibagani Adams. And then, you know, very, very interesting, you mentioned some of these things we, we still really want to you know take you and give it, you know give us uh, some insight into what history you know has that for you the OPC has not been um, um, generally acceptable by everybody even some people you know in the Yoruba circle over time the, the OPC was um, sometimes stigmatized to be you know a troublemaking organization and of course you have some of those things that you have done how, how were you able to cross over some of them, um, you know, this, um, this red flag, this gray area, you know, in the uh, establishment and the runnings of OPC? Well, you cannot be generally accepted by the people when you are fighting a just cause, especially when we have a government of dictatorship, especially when we have a government that do not have that do not have the hearts of the masses. And uh, there is no way you can be 
generally accepted. If you are in the trenches, if you are in the struggle, until when you finish the struggle, you triumph, history will now favor you. All over the world, a genuine organization is not being generally accepted. When you see an organization being even accepted up to 80%, I can tell you authoritatively, the leadership of that organization was pretending they are one way or the other a state agent. Because uh, in the struggle, you have limit of resources to project yourself. And uh, one of the content of projecting yourself for general acceptance is resources. I'm talking of a uh, monetary as aspect. And at the same time, uh, to laundry your image for general acceptance, you need that resources too. And uh, the people you are fighting for, there are certain people who benefited from the government in power, who did not even want change because they are benefiting from the wrong system. So definitely they won't love you. And uh, in the struggle too, uh, there is certain thing you are doing that you want to change the mindset of the people that was being put in bondage, even in religion, culturally. Those religion organizations, we, say, ah, we don't like them because uh, they are not part of our religion. They are all. So uh, there is a lot of factors that work with any organization in the whole world. That is, that is championing a, co a just cause. If you are lucky to get a sympathizer of 60%, that's a miracle in any society. Until when you now liberate them, they now close their eyes from any wrong thing you have done. They will now, they will now be saying Osana to you because they thought they know that there's still hurdles in the front of you. But when they realize there's still many hurdles, instead of them to hear you, they will be in a neutral way of opinion. They may not be your enemy, they will be in a neutral way of opinion. But the, the states and the oppressors, the bourgeois, will be manipulating the opinion of the people as if they hate that organization through different media. But at the end of the day, uh, God Almighty always stand by the person who, who stand with, who, who play with justice. God will stand at the back of the person who fought the struggle of justice. And when God is with you, you are, in, you are majority to millions who did not like you. So definitely, you don't expect a group like OPC that is not ready to compromise, that uh, the generality of the people will love him. We are not, in, we are not in, even in politics. A good candidate. Uh, may not have the support of the generality. Uh, a good candidate may have the support of just 60%. And that was one of the reasons that uh, those who, who, was being, who was not loved, that have enough resources, use money to rig the election and manipulate it. If a good candidate have the support and acceptance of the people, generality, on the basis of 90%, it will be very difficult to rig. But if you still have 60%, uh, the oppressor can manipulate it and give it to somebody people do not love. So uh, when you are talking of OPC, OPC is an organization assuming the generality do not love OPC. OPC will not exist up to almost 27 years now. We founded OPC in 1994. Almost 27 years of existence. Uh, two years ago, we celebrated 20, 25 years anniversary. And you can see the kind of personality that grace that occasion. I a short preparation of two weeks. So, uh, until maybe when you turn to political party, people now realize that there's a benefit on what you are doing. If you won an election, you occupy an office, a benefit will follow. But when you are still a pressure group, or an organi organization that... Uh, non voluntary organization like this you still have a limit of uh, of sympathy limit of acceptance but uh, you have to summon courage and continue with what you are doing Let's and see. let me let me let me clear let me learn and you said the generalists did not love uh, opc I, and that's a perception of certain angle i became a in 2000 and 
I, I got the letter of proclamation in October 15, 2017. And uh, Kabe's Imperial Majesty, I love you for you, in his wisdom, gave me the letter. He now pushed the installation for almost 16 months, 58 days, for people to judge. No Yoruba man go to court and against me. And uh, in the opinion, day by day, the time I got the letter, to two ways to the installation, 98% of Yoruba support me to be an area of Kakafu. I'm a product of OPC. So that's number one signal. And uh, you, we know our people normally pretend. When you help them, they close eyes. They won't say anything. Instead of them to hear you, they won't hear you. But when you are wrong, they will call you that, ah, Paolo Shema Shirun Kobenye, eh, Temba Omo Yisoro. But when you do good thing, they will call you and say, ah, Eshida Dao, that's Yoruba for you. But uh, at the end of the day, Yoruba is a race that don't, they don't lost memory on what happened. We believe in history. You will now find found some erudite professor. They will be writing good history. You don't know. By the time you forgot what you are doing, they will now bring all the documents, they will launch it and glorify you. That's how you operate. When you are still doing it, they will glorify you. But when you have done it, you have succeeded, you now see different book, different journal, different opinion coming. But when you are doing wrong thing, your body will not talk. They will be judging what you are doing, putting it in their archive. At the, at the necessary time, they will now bring the document out and destroy that person. That was how a manner our own race operate. That's part of our character. And uh, that's why I, say, I have a friend who's an Igbo. He say you he say Igbo people believe in adventure. You will believe in history. <laughs> that was one, one of my friends. He said people like history too much. You don't forget what happened. But we too, we Igbo are business person and we believe in adventure. I said if you don't know where you are coming from, you won't know where you are going. Any race that lost touch in history can never be a great race. History is very, very important. History taught you to, history guide you not to make wrong decision, not how to do, how to take good decision. Because when you know, the Yoruba will tell you, when it comes to the Bashubu, I will watch you, Tia Babashubu, and Yilongo. So, uh, the elder will know that, ah, what happened? Why did I fall? Let me see where I'm coming, down, where the road I'm passing, I did not fall. Let me see that road. So they will now know the right decision to take to move forward. That's the benefit of history. And history guides your character. And it guides you to, to make sure you uphold your image. To be a normal be product in society. When you don't have history, those who have done good things that people recognize, uh, gave honor you you your product you will not do good thing in full show so history is very, is very very important yeah let, let's talk about politics do, do you have reservation for having a military president you fought for democracy you were one of those that fought for democracy do you have reservations saying that we've had military you know people that transcended from military you know to civilian president do you have any reservation about that? Well, I have a reservation. A military is always be a military. Uh, a good example, uh, President uh, Ibrahim Babangida, he transformed from military to civilian president. And he's still using decree. Uh, the decree 2 was still working by then. Uh, decree 2 is a decree that, that you can be arrested and taken to a prison in Gongola. And Gongola, no. Uh, Borno State. We don't have Gongola anymore. And the uh, decree for is that uh, they can shut any media house, gag any media in the society. Those are the two wicked decree in any sane society. And uh, in the military, there is no process of democracy. If the council, Supreme Military Council, just sit, they take a decision and it will be binding on more than 200 million Nigerians. In democracy, there's a process. They even allow you in the public hearing in the National Assembly to come and give your own opinion. And even those who represent you, 
the parliamentarians that represent you have to represent the interests of the con their constituencies. And if they don't do well, their constituency have the right power to recall them in a normal democracy. Not Nigerian democracy we are having now. They have the power to recall them back, either in the red chamber or green chamber. So uh, there is a lot of advantage in civilian government, in democratic government, to military. Military can do and undo. A wife of the president can influence his husband that go and destroy his social village. Nothing, nothing will happen. So definitely there is a difference. And uh, the military, some of our people that are in the military, they even enjoy being a soldier under military government than when that was a, uh, under, under civilian government, sorry, than when there was a military government. Understand. Yes. Because uh, some of them confess the kind of training, the kind of course they went, they went for now. And uh, the kind of opportunity the civilian government give, gave to them now. Because the civilian government will be fearing that uh, if you don't treat the military way, that can be a coup. But the general who is a commander-in-chief as a military did not fear his boy that they can't do a coup against me. I can do anything. So you have to pamper them as a military. And when they made the request, you have to do it for them, so that uh, they won't come and take a power from you. But a, a soldier who is a military man, we we we, we dear their request that you can't do anything, and he can even he can even draw that person out of a military or set him up. So there's a lot of difference between the military government and the democratic elected government and investors. Investors will be very, very careful to come and invest in the military government. In the country that uh, we have a military government, they will be very, very careful. Even international agency, agency will not bring their conferences to that, to that country because the commander-in-chief as a military can do and undo. So the issue of uh, using court to stop them, you can't stop them. When they know that you want to use court, they will use their own tribunal. So <laughs> there is a lot of different. I cannot to, quali to qualify and crown this issue is that uh, uh, the worst the, the worst civilian government is the best military government. Yes, sir, if we coming down to the present day situation in the southwest, in the light of insecurity in the, in the region, as the Iron Kaka, how are you mobilizing other leaders in the region to ensure there is Well, I think uh, God is giving us the direction in Yoruba land now. We thank uh, some of our leaders that we still have some elders within Yoruba land, like uh, Papa Fason uh, Baba Yodi Banjo, and uh, I may be a real Kakan for what age matters in Yoruba land. And other people from the Yoruba Council of Elders, Yoruba Unity Forum, we are coming together now and other social cultural groups. And uh, the security relevant groups, we have, we have bring them on board, especially those who have structures in Yoruba land. The hunters, OPC, Agbekoya, and the vigilantes, we have brought them to a structure of a Southwest security stakeholder group. And on the level of the social cultural groups too, uh, we met, the last meeting we had was uh, in the house of uh, Yodibanjo in Leki. And we hold that meeting, we agreed that uh, there must be a pan Yoruba conference. You know, it's long we've done it. We've done a uh, pan Yoruba conference. The last one was in uh, 2017, uh, Yoruba, through Yoruba Summit Group. Now, we are looking forward on the 17th of this month on Wednesday to meet with our governors, our political leaders, even our, parliam our parliament, uh, the Southwest Caucus in the Senate, the Southwest Caucus in the Reps, and our traditional rulers, who are the, co who are the custodian of our tradition and culture, Obalokoilu, Obalonilu. So 
we are inviting them and at the same time all stakeholders our business moguls are invited because the issue on ground is about two jamming things security and economy uh, in the beginning uh, we want to pick that topic as security we now realize that uh, the issue of the generated economy and the issue of uh, our economy in the stage of comatose was the one that leads to the issue of insecurity when you don't have food on the table you can turn to criminal and hungry man is an hungry man and a society that did not have a, a country that not have food security you are breeding you are breeding criminals so we thought uh, the issue that will be discussed is about security and economy and uh, we are trying to bring uh, an editor erudite uh, professor that will give a lecture so that we can have a direction it's not as if we just go to the conference we'll be talking everybody will be talking we just come up with communicate we want to come with a blueprint from the great lecturer and at the end of the day agree on the resolution to back up the our our government to back back up the people in town in charge of authority because uh, government cannot do it alone when you travel when you travel to many countries you just you see conferences conferences and i have somebody someone i was in uh, is it not is not denmark or austria when we get there conferences 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 and i said why are they having many conferences the person told me that uh, that conferences is the one that generated policy for them is the, is the one that generated an idea to organize their society and is one that generated lead them to invent something that turned to technology so when you don't allow conferences there is no way the society can move forward in the midst of three four people discussing brainstorming on issue something will come out if you have a genuine heart of doing it so we decided to bring every group together we don't want to leave anybody on turn day by day i'm thinking who have who is the person who haven't called for this conference let us call them and at the same time we are trying to key our groups in the diaspora on online so that they can participate with us we are thinking on that level so that we can hear their opinion into that conference because uh, in the struggle of 1993 to 1999 our struggle limited more in nigeria and some few people in abroad but the world now we have the advantage of social media we have a lot of people that is that is in diaspora that is even more interested on what happened in homeland than the people in homeland so we have to work together there must be a synergy between our people in diaspora and our people in homeland so that was exactly what we are planning we are trying to to work so that uh, we can have we can be in unison there can be a unity although we still have some saboteurs within the southwest and there's no race there is no tribe that do not have that in the whole world but uh, those who believe in the tr in truth who believe that uh, you want your race to move forward you have to dissipate your effort and you make sure that the, uh, the fifth economy do not deceive you on what you believe on. No, sir. Uh, many people want to, to know what is your relationship with uh, Chief Sunday at the MO, aka Sun Sunday, who, who seems to be taking a step or two some years back in, in the defense of, of your land? Well, he's a brother, and uh, he has been here, and we are relating. I think we spoke on monday monday night he called me around 9 pm on monday on the basis of our three men that was detained in uh, in yagoku in the battle and uh, he even led me to deputy commissioner of police that uh, the deputy commissioner of police called him that he want my number based on the, the, the three OPC men that was being detained, that should I give the deputy commander? I said, give it to him, let him call me. And uh, you can see, he plays his own role. And the deputy commissioner of police called me, and we spoke, which led 
uh, to CP calling me about the issue that happened in Igogo. So we spoke, and that was what led to the release of uh, of our member in the uh, in uh, in detention. So everybody has their own rule. Assuming they call him and say that I don't have his number, I don't want to talk to him. Although the deputy commissioner of police will look for another way. So we are. My own uh, area on the for want unit. I don't want to lay more emphasis to the group that brought me out, brought me up. Although I won't forget my roots. So definitely, I won't forget my roots, but uh, I want to bring everybody on board. Uh, I don't mind the kind of sacrifice I will make towards that. To bring everybody to, on board and i want to encourage our elders to to be in unity although we know some people are working against our unity but we pray to our to god on it and we pray to our ancestor that they should deal with our internal enemy to give us peace because we have suffered a lot as a race this is a race that have i can say the resource person we have in africa Yoruba, Yoruba, Yoruba quantum in that resource space in the entire Africa will be like 25%. We have them scattered all over the world. And uh, we have mineral resources. As I'm talking to you, do you know our pressure gold is being mined illegally by some bandits in our war? When you say village, an helicopter will come from the uh, sky and drop gun and food to them. And the Ondo State government cannot enter that uh, forest. The our people can enter that forest. As I'm talking to you, some, some illegal miners are mining our good in Elisha and Ilefe. And uh, do you know what degenerated to crisis of uh, kidnapping in Ibarakpa? They were mining solid minerals in Ikogon. That was one of the resources that gave Wakilu more money to be more powerful, to buy guns that led to kidnapping. They started from one place and led to kidnapping. And uh, there was one community in Oyo. <coughs> they call it uh, uh, beside Agoare. They were mining, I remember that community, uh, Irawo, Irawoli. They are mining solid minerals there as I'm talking to you. In Nigeria too, they are mining our solid mineral as I'm talking to you. So these are resources that the, the generation that is coming supposed to use to survive, to build a very good society that we'll be proud of. By the time you allow a foreigner to come and take all your resources away, what will you leverage on in another 30 years? And no, no, no born Yoruba person can go to Samvara and mine their goods. Apart from that, the issue of security is highly germane. The issue of insecurity is highly germane in Yoruba. Not only Fulani Esme, we must not make a mistake. I'm telling you authoritatively, we have some of our, our Yoruba persons that are more criminal, crim, criminally element in Yoruba land. So we have to look on external forces and internal forces to make sure we sanitize and that was a businessman in uh, Kurudu that was kidnapped for the past uh, five days in a motor. Uh, the man had to pay ransom of about 15 million before he was released. And uh, you can see the agony they put the family home. And the man, the man have a very big farm in the Kurudu. Um, if that man run away and leave that investment, would it affect our economy in Yoruba land? About 80 something billion village was deserted in Barakwa because of full enhancement. And even in the kitty, within the pocket of two weeks, do you know how many people this criminal Fulani, not all Fulanis, kill on the process of discouraging them from agriculture because you are supplying us agriculture, uh, agricultural uh, products in Yoruba land. And uh, daily you are making almost 22 billion era from the sales of different agricultural products in the southwest. So you now have the mindset, you don't want us to develop our own. And we have a fertile land with needless of uh, fertilizers. 
And uh, I will appeal to the Ministry of Agriculture, why are they diverting the budget of Ministry of Agriculture to? Hardly will I see anybody getting loan from Ministry of Agriculture. About 85 to 90 percent of the budget is going to the north. And we can't continue on this and be calling ourselves a Nigerian. I can't be a half caste Nigerian. I can't be a second class uh, person in Nigeria. You can't call us without, without telling the truth to the whole world so that they should know what is happening here. So all these issues need to be discussed by our leaders. If you are in bondage, if some people are oppressing you, if you don't come together and tell the whole world, God will not assist you. That's God for you. But when you say, we want this almighty God, we, we don't want this almighty God, I say, oh, they are ready. Go and assist them. It's not about spiritual mind. It's about your mindset. It's about your determination. It's about a way of calling for liberation <coughs> from the Supreme Being that it will assist you for liberation. Yes, sir. Uh, this brings me to the issue of uh, the mention of some communities where solid minerals are being mined. How, uh, what do you expect from, from our traditional rulers in ensuring uh, bringing peace to, to the region? Well, I think our, I think our traditional ruler have to do something about that. They should not expect a peanut from the illegal people. Uh, a peanut. When somebody mine uh, billions of naira, you go and give Kabisi one million or two million. What will you do for that? The Elisha solid, uh, Elisha gold beyond one community. It's more than seven communities that they have gold in Elisha. And you know there is a boundary between Elisha and Ilefe. So automatically, the, the, the erosion of that gold moved to Ilefe, or it moved from Ilefe to Elisha. So I will appeal to our traditional rulers. I know they are not corrupt. I know they have integrity. I know they are a father of, of, of Yoruba land. They should make sure they protect, they protect the common wealth of our people. And they should make sure they let the whole world know what is happening in their community. Because I'm not convenient with the silence of our traditional rulers. On the issue of security, on the issue of tampering with our solid mineral, which will be our future heritage. So, future economic advantage. So, they should come out and let the whole world know is, that it's is enough for you to be engaging the governor silently. Well, be the governor is, and it, most of them are in bondage because of their ambition. They are in bondage. They can't talk the truth because one, in one way or the other, they have their ambition and they, they don't want to offend the central government. You know, the power given to the presidency is too much in our constitution. If governor dare the presidency, it can destroy the entire state within two months. So the, the political fear is there. It's only Akere Dolu who is becoming radical in his own approach. And you know the background of Akere Dolu. He has been the president of Nigerian Bar Association. And he's a fellow product, he's a radical person. He's, he's the only governor that, that is becoming radical. And I give kudos to him. Although we are not close, I'm from Ondo State. Do you know we haven't sit down one on one as a governor of my state? I don't know. But, uh, but I give kudos to him for his approach on the issue of security and the issue of uh, Yoruba race for the past three months. I was very excited and I was proud that he's a governor of my state. Especially the, the one that can it all is the anthem of Ocean State. The anthem of Ocean State, all the Yoruba speaking states should emulate that anthem. The anthem, the anthem is spiritual, it gives you courage, it gives you pride as a Yoruba person. So if our children in the school and in the public are listening to the anthem, it will give them more pride and uh, it will give them more glory in their own spirit. Our new go Allah what to do. That's a that's a sound message. And I learned that uh, Shiva Bapem wrote that anthem. He wrote that anthem before he died in 1987. And uh, in the wisdom of Aregbe led government, he picked that anthem. He used it in Oshu State. So we started promoting it in our own level. And on those state governor have endorsed it. 
I'm expecting a Gitti State Governor to endorse it. I'm expecting, I'm expecting Makinde to endorse it. I'm expecting Dakwa Biodu to endorse it. I'm expecting uh, Son Wolu. Enough of calling that the uh, Lagos is no more land. No more land. No more land. Enough, enough of calling Lagos as a federal territory. Awoli holds Lagos. And Awoli is a product of Ilefe. Majority, about 80% of Lagos is being owned by Awoli people. And uh, the, remaining coin, the remaining part of land in Leki was Ijebu. So who is calling Lagos a uh, normal land or uh, federal territory? What, what are you talking about? And even in Badagri, we still have some Yorubas. And uh, in Badagri, some of them lay claim a route to the Yoruba land. So what are you talking about? How could Yoruba, because of political uh, opportunity, be changing history? Our ancestors will not be happy. He said, uh, Lagos is a federal, daddy Yoruba, and Koriki Yoruba, Irumole Yoruba, and Inu Gai, he do gonna, he do gonna, he guy do gonna. In uh, our only language, he gonna is Ata Pepe. That is the place the Awori people planted Pepe, and it became the palace of Oba of Lagos today. We must not, because of political reasons, sell our fusho. Uh, and uh, they didn't even know non Lagos is becoming 60 percent, 50 to 60 percent of Lagos now. So we have to unite. We need more people to come and do business in our area. But at the same time, we the host have to unite. The Lagos State have to unite with the Odua investment. We have to unite with everything that happened in Southwest so that uh, in, the, in the time of need, it, all, those, all those governors will assist them. At least the Odua investment was the one they used to build the economy of Lagos. Let me trace an history about that. We have uh, three main industrial estates in Lagos. The Lupeju Industrial Estate was constructed by Awolowo. The Abapa Industrial Estate was constructed by Awolowo. Ikeja Industrial Estate, who became the capital economy now, was constructed by Awolowo. Even the uh, Agbara Industrial Estate was constructed by Awolowo. And those are the estate Lagos State is using to regenerate money now. Industrial Estate. All the Lekki they built for houses, which in, do you have any industry in Lekki? Which tasks are they taking from that place? Now the Western region constructed Lagos for economic advantage. You are now telling us that uh, we are we are federal federal That was a king in Lagos that as a cabbage says, stop it. When we I want a very quick to ask where I mean Sale Koya in the Connecting. I don't know what to go in the Connecting. Oh, the Hill and Lobby Sale Koda, I want a Sale Koni Connecting. So the monarch started laughing. So definitely we have to unite. Uh, Yoba have a very unique culture. When you see our Obas, you will be happy with their elegance, with their beat, you will be happy. We have a very historical tradition. And we have an empire that was in existence for uninterrupted for 600 years. There is no empire that exists for 600 years that was not interrupted. That was a, 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 or your empire. Uninterrupted for 600 years. Do you know what uh, led to our king to lose their, their power? It's the war of Kiriji. Kiriji war in 1870 to 1886. When the world became overbearing that our king cannot resolve it, they now going to go and call colonial master to intervene. The colonial master now intervened and resolved the, the war. And they signed treaty in 1886. That was where the colonial master now said, okay, you can't solve your problem. We have to take power from you. That was what led to amalgamation in 1914. They started bringing their investment to colonize us. After that uh, Kriji war in 1886, they established it to make sure that the, the economy power is in their hand to fund their activities. So Lord Lugard, with his uh, girlfriend Flora Shaw, now suggest that Niger area became Nigeria. And now they now cajole our king to sign, 
treaty together in a, the, the ban together in uh, 1914. So if not because of the crazy war, it may be it will be very difficult for colonial master to take political power from us. Well, you know, the two of my predecessors predecessor did not go to seclusion. You know, they are too powerful before they become Are Onaka Kanfo. Are Iba Akintola. He was a premier of Western region. He doesn't even have the time to go into seclusion. He's the premier of Western region by then. By then, they just call, they just call him and install him in the palace of... Uh, I love you for you. And uh, there are two, and that was an historical thing that happened on that day. That was the day that uh, the only uh, the soji came to the palace of uh, I love you for you. He witnessed the installation of Akintola. When he came, all the king just threw their horse, Irukere. They threw it down that they were so happy that uh, only uh, only of Ife came to witness it. On, uh, Ari Akitola did not go into seclusion. You know, many things will be divorced to you when you are in seclusion. They will to, to tell you how you will use that uh, position. Uh, Are uh, MK Abiola Kashimawo, or should Kashimawo Lawali Abiola, who gave us the livery to be where we are here today? Because of because without the anointment of June 12, <laughs> I may not be somebody in this in this world. Somebody I adore, I respect, I respect it. And that's one of the reasons that we don't fail June 12 program. We started it before the, some government and other organizations started it. Because we know that this is the roots of being a person in the activist. We must not forget it. RMK Abiola won the case against Ashikpa. You know, Ashikpa sued a lot of things for you on that uh, title for Abiola. He won the case on Friday. They installed Abiola on Saturday evening. So it was a serious legal battle. We thank uh, Are Afe Babalola. You know it's Are Bamofi of Yoruba land. He fought that battle and he won that case. In Friday evening, they installed Abiola Saturday evening. You know, Abiola was so rich. He brought drink, everything to that community for them to, but it was installed by 6 p.m. But on my own, uh, it's supposed to be a seven days in seclusion. Uh, Kabi is a lot of you for you. In his own wisdom, now say just, Are is too busy. Give him four days, rush it. So in that seclusion, I was taught a lot of things about Are. Old, old men from Oyo came for the lecture. And now told me, that do you know that Are have his own chief, a war council? I said, I don't know. He said, you have right to your own chief and war council, and you have a traditional 16 war council chief, apart from the honorary. I said, eh, he now bring all the documents. They now even refer me to Samuel Johnson book that Are has a right to about 85 or 80 chieftaincy title as a warrior by then. When the population of Yoruba is not even up to 5 million by then. So that you will have your own war council. This may, will not be a war of Ghana, intellectual war, uh, interrupting on the progress of Yoruba. Not war. We are not saying you should go and bring war together. We bring an educated people that will interact with you as a Are in council. They told me a lot of things about Are that I've never read in the books. And there's some position they told me, King Kim, King Kim. The, the name is quite different from Yoruba name about Are. And uh, the, the, the word prison of Are, 
they taught me I, I couldn't remember it's a laughing that no if you want to know how they praise are go and meet a uh, uh, about laughing he can praise array with a uh, uh, lining prison prison lineage for about uh, one hour and I as I cannot praise myself for even <laughs> three minutes <laughs> so they taught me a lot they gave me the historical background the mistakes some are made how I should manage my relationship with Allah Afin, that if I has issue with Allah Afin, is a uh, your mercy that will resolve it if your mercy have issue with uh, Allah Afin, it's a re that will resolve it they told me everything about the shift time position and he told me something that I will see in the media so I was where to toss where to talk and guided that was when we first installed the first shift tense when people was, were crying we were, I was laughing when we now go and dig the information of how are are latosha are are latosha we now dig his shift tense out shift tense title out we now dig the information of the area of Afonja. you know shalaburu shalaburu was the other area of Afonja. And uh, Oniko, he was Osiare of Aponja. And uh, Latosha was Otuare Ojoa Aburumaku before he overthrew him. He was the Otuare. And uh, the Gbonka Are Onokakafo was the Balog Modern Law who liberated Yoruba from the war of Fulani in 1840. He was the Gbonka Are Onokakafo. When he fought that war, he had to honor him with Balogun. And you know that uh, an are fought to Ghana. A lot of set an are to go and defend the Yoruba, the Ga people in Accra. And even fought to Kumasi. So there is a lot of things that people hide that is a very deep historical uh, content that can give us pride, that can give our incoming children pride. There is a lot of things that people hide so so uh, and all these things in the archive of a uh, alaf when you get to alaf when you ask for anything you see ah uh, i read runo can't see you put his glass there i read runo think about it look okay can't see we go into the archive and bring it up i love for the copy of one a lot of things that I can't remember. And when you go to the Oni Palace too, I remember vividly when the Kabisi Okwade Shijuade. He has a very strong eye card too. I have uh, I have been around with two of them. They have serious documents that uh, we should people should close to them and gain a lot of things. Kabisi Okwade Shijuade have gone. I know the Oni Oni have upgraded the archive. We can gain a lot of them because all these things what make Britain a unique country because they showcase their history they document everything that happened and there's some uh, story about Yoruba land you can't get here that you get it in the British archive and I will appeal to your state government to develop the archive we have in Ibadan because the archive we have in Ibadan have the historical content of many communities I remember when there is a crisis in Narigiji. Most of the documents we use on course. We have to come to Ibadan. And that was the foundation Shifoba Femi Awolo laid down for Yoruba land. So I believe the issue of history is highly germane. Our governor should make sure that they, they taught our children history. And they taught our people our children Yoruba language. As a matter of as a matter of fact, uh, after English Amas. Yoruba language should be the thought for to get to state university. So our people will live, our children will lay priority to Yoruba language. You can imagine the problem I'm having with my children about our language. When you ask uh, Uru Hashem to speak Yoruba now, he will speak Yoruba like Igbo. Eh? Like Igbo person. Even the Toyin, the elderly sister, is not so sad. And we have, you know, we have a limited time with them. And my wife, like, is just like an Igboish uh, woman. He loved them speaking English, English, English. So when I'm giving pressure, if you want to learn, I'm going to go to Badagba. 
So <laughs> you can see the scenario we have. And I'm the one championing promotion of culture in Yoruba land. So I think all these things should come from the curriculum because the artisans have time for them more than we parents. Yeah, uh, uh, one, before we go, we'll, two things. Uh, you mentioned the praises of um, the, the, the array. And you said the Alafi can go on and on saying, we would like you to give us, our, our, I'm sure that our you know, listeners will, viewers will want to hear you say, even if it is 30 seconds, we can to hear What we hear sounds like. You know, uh, so, yeah, we, so will you pay me for that? Where I read the Kuradiye, or the Fuladiye, Kudejadiye. I ran in Jackin in Benningbo, Toduma, my own, and it over my panije, Bills, Panije, Toma, Panije, Koyo, do my own, my own, my own. I read a good, I read a bit of Lubia Jerry. I let me just. No, yeah, uh, when you meet Baba, when, when Baba is happy, when is, Baba is talking to me, when he's happy, you will now see the praises. Ah, uh, maybe I will go to Baba to go and record some of it. Baba, you know, Baba is a, is a, is the deposit of uh, of knowledge. And you sit down with uh, Baba laughing when you have time with you. We'll be bringing that issue out one by one before you know four hours. And when you talk, you will go and bring another file out. There was a day, he said, the, the colonial master just ride us. They ride us. He now went to go and bring a document that their forefathers, they are laughing by then. He write to the colonial master, my friend, my friend. That was the ending of the letter. No, they have all this document with them. So, and uh, that's why you, we must not ignore traditional institution. No matter the mistake they made, we know some people are not. Uh, some people are mistakenly giving that position in Yoruba, and they are creating problem for us. But let us manage them. If that job, or we lead them at our room that's why all the mistakes they made we must not abuse them we must not demonize them because when we are demonize them demonizing them it's not like uh, you are throwing stone to your glass house the only institution that led for us to defense is traditional institution because the police uh, politician will go and come they are soldiers soldier go soldier come but the traditional institution remain there as early as traditional institution of the caliphate, 1804. You don't see them uh, full of any people abusing them, no matter their mistake. It's 1804. And we are talking of our own traditional uh, institution. If it had been existed for more than 8,000 8, years, it had been existing for about 8,000 years. There's an icolo icologist. They went to uh, Idiri, Idiri in your state. They went to go and prick a prick, prick a bone from the soil 14 years ago. A bone of human being. Idiri in your state. 14 years ago. So when you are talking of uh, Ife. Ife is almost 10,000 years of existence. We have three Ife. Ife Undaye. Ife Oi. Ife Afe Lubebe. That's the Ife we have now. Ile Ife. Ile Ife Afe Lubebe. Ife Oi is the first. Ife, Ife Undaye is the first. Ife Oi is the second. Ile Ife we have now. Ife Afe Lubebe. And this three they wrote for us. I don't know, maybe. The colonial master gave that history. Odua did not come from Mecca. Odua is a spirit. It's a deities. But later, we now have human being who now call Odua, who became a king. His name is Odua. Not the spirit that come with chain. That's why the, the one that come from with chain and be their crown, Ade Ari, 
of Olojo that uh, Oni normally used for Olojo was uh, was a was 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 a spirit. It came with chain. So when you don't believe our own spirit, when we say that uh, you say a, a bastard, you bastard, say how should you believe that uh, someone come from? Uh, you believe a Eli Elijah going through the heaven through fire in the Bible. If you believe the Bible, you don't believe our own stories. Elijah be keke no lo soro. Awa ni odu wa fi wa fi se ni aferan o fi di wa sile o fi wa joba laarin awon iru mole o wa no believe o de believe to Elijah Olorun be bi tatijo awa la sin baba bi tatijo thank you but before we go your dress your 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 always clad in white for as much as I've seen it looks like him is this your style or it comes with them you know people people have the illusion that uh, maybe I belong to a society no it's not about society it's about what my destiny wants you know we there's a lot of mistake we have made in the in the beginning of Europe even uh, we witness it to 70s before religion take a lot of things from us. Religion has its own purpose of advantage. Although it took some bad things from us, but the good thing of it, we must not throw it away. There is nothing with positive without negative. Even uh, when you give a child, give back to a child. If you are a child, if you are a child, you won't have any cake. So that's how God operates. And uh, when there is no darkness, you won't appreciate light. So, there is one thing they call Akosejai. When the child was born, they would call the Abalis, they would consult, who is this child? What did they want? What kind of life will he, will he live? What occupation will suit his destiny? They will, they will research and know everything. They will not allow his mother or her mother to be there. You know, women normally talk. They can even say within the children, it can cause problem. It's only his father. They will know. The, the father will know this, the secret of that child. They will have the details. So they will now guide that child. When it's going on, and he alagbaja, he share lomo, he share ba lomo imashi. He alagbaja, when he kubudo fe omo biri, omo biri duju o, upa lo kubudo fe. Ah, when he kubudo fe kupa o, duju lo. So they could have guide them. They will guide them with the spiritual information. Even Sele and Kerubu normally do that too. Sometimes they will consult and know the kind of child the, the child have. So, but my own was not a cause I was born into a Muslim family. You know, my name is Ghani. Uh, they, they couldn't have done that. But when, there's a lot of advantage in OPC people thought uh, is negative. OPC taught us how to know life. How to know the content of life. How to even defend yourself. How to protect yourself. In 2000, yeah, 2001, people started telling me when I consulted, uh, Emma wash of phone. I now ask them, how should I be wearing white? The cloth I have in different color is almost 100 and something or 200. Where will I go and put all this cloth? But thing was not okay for me because I didn't change my clothes into white. Until around 2004, in 2005, I just decided one day. I just see, I call it tailor. I bought about 30 clothes. They sew it. I started wearing white with my pint and uh, all on this. And I, all the clothes, you know, like maybe somebody in Yaba, <laughs> all my boys. Now give my clothes to, to my boys. I share it to them. That was the time I started wearing white. That's number one. The second aspect of it, I always wear gobby like a uh, dark or like this before. But when I put on gobi on my hair, before five minutes, I'll be scratching my head. I'll be having headache. So I now slept in one afternoon. I met one baba. And I now say, Gani, ma wo fila gobi ma wo. Abi ti ajani ko ma wo. On lo bele demo. That was the time I changed my cap. So abi ti So a lot of things happened, but uh, we, we did not have more secret as a public figure. And we have to say all this because of the generation that is coming so that they can tap on it. When you hide, when you hide a deposit of what is happening, you won't build a generation that is coming. 
So definitely something that uh, you can tell people, tell them so that they can know how to guide their, their self. Because uh, we be, the Bible said, my people die, my people perish because they lack knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. It looks like uh, we should go on and on like that. Very insightful and historic moment we've had there. We'll be speaking with the area of Okanga for of Yoruba land, Iba, Gandhi, Adams. And of course, um, I did this with Dapo Akira for my name, Victor Winka. And um, this is Controversy on Vanguard Life. Much more to come, you know, after this. Thank you for your time.